Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic. I'm Barry P. Cook, and we're going to get right into my review of The Mandalorian Chapter 15, The Believer. Uh, the synopsis for this episode is very simple. Uh, Mando, Cara Dune, Boba Fett, Fennec Shand, and Season 1 criminal Mayfield go to an Imperial mining base looking for the location or coordinates of Moff Gideon's ship so that they can pursue him and get Grogu back. Uh, and once again, this is just a great episode. So I don't have a lot to say um, except to sort of muse at some of the things that occurred in the episode, uh, which were exciting and cool and just great. Um, first of all, Bill Burr. Uh, I didn't remember him being in season one. Um, I'm not sure why, but he was. And uh, I thought he was great in this episode. It's funny because over the last few days, I had been watching some of his comedy. I watched a special of his, and I watched some videos of him uh, on uh, one of the nighttime talk shows. Um, and uh, he's just incredibly funny. And I thought he was great in this episode. He said a lot of stuff that was funny, but he can, uh, he can act pretty decently, so... Um, I enjoyed him in this episode, and I look forward to him being in more episodes in the future. Hopefully, he will be. Um, I was really glad to see that Boba Fett looked a lot better in this episode than he did in the last episode. The last episode, the armor was all dinged up, and it seemed not to really fit him very well. Um, but by this episode, I guess, uh, he's uh, cleaned it up and painted it, and uh, it, it just fits better on him over whatever he's wearing under it now. It might be the same thing, I don't know, but in that case it looks like it fits him better. Of course, in uh, the Star Wars movies he wore pants. In this, uh, you know, um, outing he's wearing, like, robes. So he doesn't look quite like Boba Fett of old, but he looked really good in this episode. He looked like a kick-ass monk wearing armor, and it looked like it fit him better. I think he got rid of a belt he was wearing. Um, that kind of didn't make it look right. Um, he just looked great. I do wish we'd seen more of him in this episode. He's kind of just acts as a pilot and this doesn't really do anything. Um, so, you know, maybe in future episodes he'll we'll see more of him in action. It's not as though we haven't seen that. He, we did see him in action in the previous episode. But like I said, he didn't look that good and so it was kind of anticlimactic. I want to see him, you know, looking as good as he does now and kicking some ass. Uh, so maybe we'll get that in upcoming episodes, but now the premise of this episode was they're taking Mayfield to this Imperial um, mining base so that he can access a terminal to get the coordinates to Moff Gideon's ship. And as soon as they get there and they're talking about, okay, how are we going to do this? He says, well, um, I can't uh, go in, um, you know, without a helmet on or whatever, because they're going to recognize me. At least I thought that's what he said. And then when he gets there, he doesn't have a helmet on the whole time. So either I misunderstood the dialogue or they said something that then didn't work out. I don't, I don't really know, but um, I wrote down, you know, why isn't he... He wears the helmet for like two minutes while driving the transport truck toward the base. But then he takes it off and I thought, okay, he's going to put it on when he gets back to the base, so that A, nobody recognizes him who might know him, and B, he doesn't get scanned, you know, but he never puts it on. And it turns out that you can't have it on when you access the terminal. So I, I didn't see the, the correlation there, or the, the, the connect between those two things. It seemed like they made a mistake. They talk about how he's, the, the whole reason they went to get him is because he would still have clearances, or part of the reason is he would have a clearance to use the machine, but, like, he left the Empire, he left the service, he committed crimes and was arrested. Like, why would they think his clearance would still be in effect? Like, don't they, you know, don't, you know, secure installations usually cancel the clearances of people who are no longer working at the installation or, or part of the company, as it were, in this case, the, the Empire? Um, so I thought that was strange. Uh, but, you know, who knows? Maybe I misunderstood again, uh, though I don't think so. Then we get to see the inside of Slave 1, and we've not seen that in live action before, except for a quick look 
up the ramp in, I believe, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, so that was interesting. And, uh, you know, then they get to the planet and they're, they ambush some uh, delivery truck drivers who are driving this volatile substance to the uh, facility. And they get attacked by pirates who want to blow it up. Uh, so I wrote down, pirates, oh crap. And then there's this amazing uh, transport top fight sequence where Mando, you know, climbs up on top of the transport and he's basically fighting like 20 guys, pretty much one after the other, shooting some with his blaster, uh, you know, just hand-to-hand -hand combat with other ones, engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat with other ones, all while Bill Burr is like trying to keep the volatile substance on the shit, uh, truck from exploding. Um, and it made for some cool moments. And um, just when it looked like everything was going to go to shit, uh, it was either Cara Dune or um, Fennec Shan that shot the remaining guys who were attacking the truck when uh, Mando ran out of uh, <laughs> blaster blasts. Um, and I just thought it was an amazing um, fight sequence. And then... At the very end, some TIE fighters swoop in to take the pirates out, and that was just very badass. So they get to the facility, and the Bill Burr character, Mayfield, says, Oh man, after all this, I can't go in there because that guy will recognize me, or may recognize me. So he says, You're going to have to do it if, if we're going to continue on, but the machine won't work for you unless you take your helmet off. So Mando eventually takes his helmet off so that he can operate the machine, and he gets the coordinates, but... Why did it work with his face? He's not, he shouldn't be in the Imperial system as one of their members or workers, so why did it work? I, I, I didn't understand that. They, they made a lot of contradictory statements and whatnot in this episode, as far as I'm concerned, regarding who can identify who and what can identify what, and showing your face versus not showing your face. I, I was just confused by all that. But anyway... He gets the coordinates, and while he's doing this, I'm thinking, you know, his mustache is uh, pretty nicely uh, uh, trimmed there, and he doesn't have a beard. When and how does he shave? Like, I know how he shaves, but, like, <laughs> where, where, like, I guess the question is more when than how. Obviously, he takes the helmet off and shaves, but, like, when? When is he doing this? I guess he has a lot of free time on, or he had, up to this point, uh, a lot of downtime uh, on some days. Uh, on uh, the Razor Crest where he could tend to such things because he's obviously not doing it when he's around other people. So, I don't know, I just, just a crazy thought that popped into my head. Um, anyway, then, just as they're about to leave, the um, commander that uh, Mayfield was worried about recognizing him approaches Mando and tries to talk to him and asks him stuff like, you know, what's your designation and... Uh, just as Mando is about to demonstrate that he doesn't know what the hell this commander is talking about and doesn't have an answer, Mayfield rushes in and gives his, um, his TK number. And I was like, oh, is it going to be TK421? TK421, why aren't you at your post? But of course it wasn't. But, uh, I thought that was a, a funny moment where, you know, uh, it could have been TK421. Would have been a little Easter egg, but... They didn't do that, but anyway, um, the guy asks them to sit and have a drink with them, and I'm thinking, oh crap, the longer he sits with Bill Burr's character, Mayfield, he's, you know, the higher the chances are he's going to recognize him, the whole thing's going to be blown. Then they're sitting there and having this drink and a conversation, and I didn't really like the characterization, characterization of the commander. Um, he didn't come off like the typical uh, Imperial commander usually comes off, very stoic, um, very uh, British very militaristic. He came off more like a deranged supervillain from a Bond movie. It wasn't over the top in that way, but his demeanor was, you know, more similar to that, I'd say. So I didn't understand why they characterized him that way. But anyway, they have this conversation, and then Bill Burr, you know, engages in a, a, a little back and forth with him about this mission that they were both on, where a bunch of innocent people died and so forth. And he kind of just gets pissed, and he shoots the commander. And I went, oh, shit, run, guys. So they take off, like, the only way they know, out the window, basically. 
it was kind of like their um, trash compactor moment where they couldn't go out through the regular hallway and doors and stuff or, you know, the regular door into the next room and keep running. They had to just go out the window because troopers were rushing in and stuff. Uh, and um, fortunately, they get uh, a little help from Cara Dune and uh, uh, Fennec Shand who are uh, sniping from a distance and then Slave One comes flying in and uh, they get on Slave One and uh, I was thinking, wow, you know, I never thought I'd be happy to see Slave One. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty great, actually. And then uh, the guy, uh, Mayfield, blows up the frickin' building or severely damages it with a shot to, like, their generator or power supply or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But then TIE Fighters give chase. I'm like, oh, crap. But, uh... Slave One drops, you know, Boba from Slave One drops this giant, like, bomb on them that, like, just takes them out without even hitting them. Like, it gets in their vicinity and he blows it. Um, and uh, it just takes them out and leaves this big shockwave. And I was like, TF was that. <laughs> like, what the hell was that? Uh, we need more of those in the hands of the good guys on this show. Um... But uh, that's where the episode ended. They end up letting um, Mayfield go. They had gotten him out of a uh, prison camp at the beginning to go on this mission with them. And they end up letting him go, which is which is cool. Because um, he seemed like a, a decent dude. And, uh, you know, uh, as I said, I, I wish there had been more Boba Fett in this episode. But maybe we're going to, um, you know, see more with him in future episodes where he's doing something more than piloting, and there was no Baby Yoda in this episode. No Grogu. Uh, and I think that's the first episode where he wasn't in any of it. And that was kind of a bummer. So I'm hoping they rectify that by, you know, in next, the next episode. But uh, that's really all I have to say about this episode. Um, in the next couple of days, I'm going to try to make a video about the massive, massive info dump that came out of uh, Disney uh, just yesterday regarding, um, you know, all the Marvel and Star Wars properties and whatnot that are uh, coming up, or, you know, uh, officially now, that have been announced officially, that are coming up in the next year or couple of years. Some of them we already knew about. Some of them are, are completely uh, new revelations. Um, some of the stuff that's going to happen with these projects as far as casting, are crazy revelations. So um, I need a little bit of a time to assemble, you know, my thoughts on that, cover the most important stuff so that I don't make a two-hour long video. <laughs> uh, because there's literally uh, uh, that much information where you could just go on and on for hours just from what they released at this investor call that they call it. Um, but until then, my friends, I bid you peace and long life.